Okay, so I actually love it when anybody publishes some kind of, you know, review of Kitty Plasma because A, you get to see a perspective of an user instead of another developer on how Kitty Plasma is meant to be used and what its issues are. And also because it allows me to give some insight, hopefully, on what's going behind the scenes to fix those issues. So let's get started and let's see this video by the Linux cast, which has done exactly that. Is that because Kitty has a ton of different you know settings like they've crammed thousands of settings into a settings panel they need to make that settings panel easier to navigate for not only new users but for everyone okay so the video starts off by saying that we should improve the system settings and who am i to disagree obviously but i have to say i have to give some counter criticism i think that some pointers in these cases are extremely extremely sorry useful Yes, the system settings could totally be improved, but the question is how actually, because uh, when you have so many settings, you actually have to sit down there and see what's going wrong, what's going right, and how to fix that. So in these cases, please give us our your opinion of system settings, but try as much as possible to give some practical things that we can take and you know actually use to improve system settings. Of course, it's not something that we haven't thought about at all. And in fact, on our GitLab, there's a thread that has lots and lots of ideas inside of it, which talks about how system settings should be reorganized to, you know, make sure that everything is understandable and easy to find. So it is something that we are currently working on. And he is correct in saying that we have worked on a lot in the past years. And I agree that it has to get better please, please give us ideas. Like any idea at this uh, brainstorming stage is something that's gonna be helpful to our developers. So feel free to just pitch out anything that you think is going incorrectly with the current system settings. Regarding this thing of, you know, actually when you add features, then the goalpost is gonna keep moving towards, I think lately we've been doing the opposite. And that is, especially for Kitty Plasma 6, to sunset options that we don't think are that useful or well exposed anymore. A good example of this is the setting to change the size of the icons in various places, such as the panel, because basically nobody was actually respect respecting sorry, that setting. So we just, you know, removed it. There has been a couple of complaints, but you know, you can't remove something and everybody is just gonna be happy. You do have to make trade-offs sometimes. And this trend of removing some unused, very old settings is gonna actually help us a lot, you know, improve system settings because it's gonna move the goalpost backwards towards us. So we've, we've been kinda doing the opposite of adding features lately. But don't worry, Kitty Plasma is still going to be the most customizable. That's not going to go away. But, you know, things that you never use, we can just kill them, hopefully. There is one thing that is not mentioned in this part of system settings, and that's fair because it's very behind the scenes, but system settings right now is a mix of Qt widgets, kind of the old, we could call it, standard way to do interfaces, and the QML, which is kind of the new way we could say again of making interfaces and these two like mixed together and it's a bit of a mess from a techno technological point of view and a lot like seriously a lot of the efforts in the past years were taking Qt widget stuff and porting them to QML. That's gonna make them prettier, that's gonna make them much, much easier to maintain, and that's gonna make system settings as a whole much, much better. Hopefully by maybe Plasma 6 or maybe some later version, the whole system settings is gonna be QML. Hopefully, I think that's the idea. And that's really gonna improve again a lot how system settings feel and is organized. So that there's also that going on behind the scenes. The second one that I want to talk about, and I don't understand this honestly. K Runner is one of the best features of KD Plasma. KD Plasma needs to make K Runner not better because it's still it's already fantastic. What they need to do is make it front and center. 
make it discoverable. And that's just, I mean, it's so good, but not many people use it, unless you're like a diehard KDE fan. I think I mentioned this in um, my video with the Linux experiment as well. The thing is, KRunner, the same exact functionalities that you get with KRunner are also in the application launcher applet, which means that you can just press meta, you have the search field, and that search field has the same capabilities of QRunner. Which means, to me, as kind of a designer and developer-ish, that when I think of the user that is not going to know KD Plasma too well, because maybe it's the first time using KD Plasma, I think that they should very nice search functionalities of KDE through the search that is in the application launcher. That's the intuitive way. Maybe later on they can find out about Kerunner and they also can find out that they can use Kerunner even if they ditch the application launcher or change it, change it for something else. Personally, I wouldn't make a big deal out of people not knowing about Kerunner initially because they can just search in the application launcher and that's basically the same thing you have all the same features now it's possible that in the new kde welcome page that was released with the last version maybe that's in there i haven't actually been able to see that yet so it's uh, yes in the welcome page there is now a section about kerunner which tells you how to use it so that has been addressed fantastic and and it's not even like out of the box it's like really really good but because it's kde it has a ton of settings and extensions and plugins or whatever that you can add to it so that you can make it even more powerful really i think that a lot of people are using the search functionality in the application launcher so it's not that big of a deal if people don't all know about kerunner in my honest opinion one thing i do agree with with this um, counter proposal of mine is that our it's awesome that Kerunner has all of that options I totally agree and we don't quite expose that those options in the application launcher if you just click the settings icon that's gonna bring up kickoff settings and those do not talk about uh, search at all so you have to either open Kerunner and click the settings button there or open system settings and go into the search part of it so I agree that the settings are not as well exposed in the application launcher. KDE, unlike GNOME, has a community surrounding it, right? G GNOME hasn't a community? And yeah, there's a GNOME community, but they're very tightly knit and don't welcome new users easily. Hey yo, what the? GNOME's community don't welcome new users? Uh, but that's not the topic. But I gotta say, I disagree with that. Maybe it's very subjective, I guess, depends on how you experience the GNOME, or the GNOME community recently, but whenever I tried out GNOME, whenever I talked uh, with the GNOME community that totally exists, obviously, they have always been very open. And whenever I actually did videos like KD developer tries GNOME, and I even criticized GNOME in some aspects, I tried to keep my criticism constructive and people seemed very happy with what I was saying. So uh, I kind of disagree with this experience. I like the GNOME community. I don't know. I, I just wanted to point that out. Sorry. Discover used to be god awful. It, it was slow. The app pages were not good. Like they didn't, they had places for screenshots, but there were no screenshots. Half of them didn't have descriptions. It was, I mentioned that it was slow, but it was like really, really, really slow. That being said, it needs to get better still. I'm about that, about discover not loading. So uh, you can see that discover is actually loading all the applications just fine. However, it's currently in this video not being able to load all the plugins. So plugins and applications are actually in two very different places. I'm not sure what's the API behind applications. I think it's like package kit or something. But when you actually search and look for plugins, which is what you're doing right now, then that goes into the KD store, which you can find at store.kd.org. And very often, sadly, the store has some issues, so it's not always um, you know, possible to open it. And I guess what's happening is that either you have some connection issues, but I don't think that's the case, or the store is having some connection issues. And that explains why it's not loading. There's, it's not like it's low. It's not receiving any data from the store. And it is totally true that Discover should expose that in a nicer way. 
probably if you go into the get hot new stuff application, which is the one you actually get when you try to install something from, from system settings, then it's gonna tell you what the error is. I guess this cover should do the same. I totally agree with that should be improved. Is that, did you know that if you go into Discover, you can find a lot of the KDE stuff there? And by KDE stuff, I mean themes, I mean uh, widgets and stuff like that, uh, different cursors and all that stuff. Wh which way of getting that stuff is better, I, I can't argue. You know, I always use the separate one, but Discover has all that stuff too. I wish that they made that more apparent, promoted it just a little bit, you know, because it's really cool that you can go into Discover and say, hey, I'd really like a new clock widget. Show me all your clock widgets and it, sh it shows you the clock widgets. You know, that's really cool. I'm not sure I agree with the fact that it's not very well exposed that Discover can install plugins for Plasma. It's one of the three main items in the sidebar as soon as you open Discover. It's true that we don't tell users about that beforehand, like in the welcome uh, application. However, I don't think there's really any reason to, especially because the best way, in my opinion, still to install stuff is when you go into system settings, which is where you want to customize KD Plasma, and then you just see the button get more themes and you click on that. So. I think it's nicely exposed when you open Discover and there's not really an, a reason to expose it even further, even if you don't open Discover. So, kind of disagree there. It's totally true that Discover could improve its search and in general, Discover used to be really bad. I totally agree with you here, Discover was bad, but uh, there has been a lot of work. Like there has been at least one redesign for each six months from the past four years, I don't know, that kept improving and improving how it works and how it looks. Nowadays, I think it's really good. It's said, of course, that you found out the bug that uh, doesn't allow to load stuff from the store sometimes, I guess. I can understand that, yeah, that it should improve. Search, as an, as an example, as you said, could, could improve. I'm not sure what else. Like, I'm, I'm gonna say here again, uh, regarding this, uh, I would ask for some more uh, specific feedback about what's wrong, what could be improved, uh, because it felt a bit general and I didn't quite understand what you were proposing to you know, change. So it's not like there's no improvement. You could totally improve Discover. I, I just didn't quite understand what things of Discover currently annoy you. I didn't always believe this, but I think that KDE should become less Windows-like. It makes it harder for people to think that they're using something different when it looks so much the same. So I would like to see Plasma to be a little bit less like Windows, just out of the box. Maybe use your floating panel so that it looks a little bit different. I mean, it doesn't have to be completely different. The kitty is too much like Windows. Um, you said that <laughs> you said that we should use the floating panel by default. <laughs> right now we cannot use the floating panel by default because it has uh, some issues, techno technological issues behind it. But uh, luckily enough, there is a merge request that fixes those issues. So who knows? It's kind of hard to, you know, actually go to other developers and say, okay, I want the floating panel because I, I did the floating panel. So, hey, I want the floating panel to be enabled by default. And they are like, okay, does it improve like accessibility or and like no it's just you know eye candy and like okay <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> I, I i literally don't have any reason to enable the floating panel except you know it's eye candy so <laughs> we might as well do it <laughs> but but yeah i totally agree regarding that you know it's too similar to windows i'm not sure i if I agree, I can understand the criticism, um, especially towards like Windows 10, especially because they switched to a light theme and we already had a light theme, so it's kind of the opposite, but I get that. Windows 11 though, I do feel like it's significantly different. They use like centered icons, a very different application launcher, and even the look and feel with all the rounded stuff, uh, I feel like it's significantly di significantly different. And yes, although I guess we could walk away a bit from the Windows look, 
it's not the Windows look. It's how com most like the vast majority of computers have worked. Except for like GNOME and Macintosh, you always had like a bottom taskbar and then application launcher and then Windows with a title bar on top with the close, like that's the generally of a desktop. And I guess you could do things like enable floating panels to try to distinguish yourself a bit from a design point of view. But I, I feel like with Windows 11, it's different enough that this is not so important anymore. But I guess this is extremely subjective. However, to KDE developers, I want to do this because it's either too similar to Windows or too different from Windows, these kind of things are never good reasons to do anything. Like if you want to do a change in KD Plasma, it has to be for KD Plasma. If the reasoning is let's try to do things more like Windows or le less like Windows, that's not gonna get accepted. You gotta have other reasons to do things. Shortcuts in KD Plasma could be easier to find. And they do have a section in the top level menu of the settings panel called shortcuts. But once you get into there, you get into the weeds. And that's because the shortcuts are all over the place. Like for example, close window is in at least three different places. And finding them in the first place can be a little bit diff difficult because you have to, I mean, calling KWIN KWIN for new users is a little bit confusing. If you're a brand new user to Plasma, maybe not even to Linux, but just to Plasma, you have to know what KWIN is in order to know that a lot of the shortcuts that you probably want in order to manipulate where your windows are, you know, how to close windows, how to move them around, all that stuff is under the KWIN's category. But if you don't know what KWIN is, how are you supposed to know that's where the, supposed to stuff, where the stuff is that you're looking for, right? Shortcuts. Yeah, I 100% agree that we shouldn't expose the term KWIN to users. It should at least probably be a window management, but seeing just the amount of options in that category, I totally agree with that. Yeah, 100% agree. That should be changed. So I will derail the discussion here a little bit just to talk because I kind of mentioned this, but I do want to point out that a feature that I would love, like I would totally want in KD Plasma is that like when you hold a key, you're able to see the shortcuts in a pop-up with that key. So if you press Meta and you hold Meta, you see a pop-up with all the shortcuts with Meta. I think Unity did this and it was just awesome. So I would totally want to have something like that and it would improve, you know, discoverability for shortcuts so much. So, you know, I just wanted to add another feature request for Kitty. So yeah, regarding this whole piece, I have nothing to say. I don't quite have any like insight about shortcuts in particular, but I, I don't disagree with anything that hasn't been said. It's true that things could be better uh, exposed to the users. Right now, there's very much a thing of uh, shortcuts are uh, exposed as they are registered by applications under the application name, even if it's like KWIN, which shouldn't be exposed to the user, that could uh, and probably should change. So nothing to say there. Okay, so I hope that I managed to not sound too... Uh, <laughs> I totally disagree with what you say, but I was actually trying to give some insight on what uh, we are doing to work on these things. I, I really liked that uh, it was some significantly more actionable um, criticism compared to what I get other times, which is like, uh, KD is buggy. Yeah, I, I know that. <laughs> That's not very actionable. What, what am I going to do with that? Yes, we should totally fix bugs. We are already doing that. So. <laughs> but uh, being able to go forward and uh, put together some more uh, precise criticism is very much appreciated. So thanks and I hope you got something useful out of the video.